Here in the United States, people can, for the most part, count on companies to protect their basic human rights. Not so elsewhere in the world, which is where Ken Roth enters the picture. He's the former federal prosecutor who now runs Human Rights Watch, an organization that operates in more than 80 countries, and last year received a $100 million gift from billionaire investor George Soros. Ken is here with us this morning. Ken, how big a problem really is human rights in the corporate world? Well, it's, it's a large problem. Traditionally, CEOs said human rights, those are something the government should worry about. They don't apply to corporations. No one says that today. The public expects corporations to uh, avoid complicity in serious human rights violations. They want to make sure that, that factories uh, don't have labor violations. They want to make sure that, say, extraction industries don't hire abusive security forces. They want to make sure that Internet companies don't censor. And, and CEOs have to be attentive to those concerns. But here's a big problem. Who sets the standard? Who's to say that a certain type of treatment violates uh, human rights if it doesn't break the law. Well, that's what's interesting. Right now, it's public expectation. And so companies have to predict, you know, what is the press going to expose? What is an NGO going to condemn? Um, you've seen, because of that uncertainty, certain industries beginning to adopt voluntary standards to try to provide some kind of regularity. And indeed, there's even a movement toward encouraging government regulation, something that is usually anathema to business. But, but because there's a recognition of a need for global standards, so you don't have real variation from country to country, you're beginning to see companies toy with the idea of asking governments to intervene. Ah, but there is no one single standard setter, even if we would like to see, as a society, some kind of uh, global standard set. So doesn't that create some loopholes for ambiguity, let's say? Companies, to, it allows companies to hide behind uh, local law, for example, even if in a public forum they embrace the idea of human rights? Yes, I mean, for example, there are international standards that apply to governments. Um, these are all written up in treaties and they're very specific. But what, for example, does the requirement to respect freedom of expression mean if you're an internet company operating in China? And for that reason, in that case, uh, Microsoft, Google, and Yahoo got together with, with Human Rights Watch and other NGOs and adopted something called the Global Network Initiative that tried to provide guidance to companies to how to minimize uh, the Chinese government's requirements for censorship. You bring up the subject of China. It's one of the countries that pop into people's minds when they think about human rights and the question of abuses. Talk to us about some of the human rights hotspots around the globe. Well, in a place like China, one of the big problems is how do you guarantee labor rights in a country that basically prohibits independent trade unions? And so there, the more progressive companies are trying to find ways for workers to, to organize and make their concerns heard by management without formally adopting a labor union. Other places, say a place like, like Congo, where there's mineral richness, how does an extraction company operate there without paying off local warlords and becoming complicit in serious violent abuses? So and depending on the industry, you find very different problems in different parts of the world. Ken, we've seen the impact of human rights campaigns on brand name companies, call it. Nike and soccer balls comes to mind. But how do you drive change at companies further down the supply chain or companies that operate, that are based in and operate in foreign jurisdictions? One that comes to mind, for example, is Foxconn. Mm -hmm. It's a supplier to Apple, and at the same time, it's a Taiwan-based company that, for the most part, operates in China. And as we know, saw a rash of suicides last year. Well, well today, the expectation for the big brand name companies is not simply that they in their own operations avoid complicity in human rights abuse. They have to make sure that their suppliers also abide by the same standards. So when you have a, a scandal, as in Foxconn, um, that immediately goes to the doorstep of Apple. And there's real pressure on Apple to insist that anybody who's going to be involved in, in manufacturing its electronic equipment has to abide by the same basic labor standards that you would think Apple would insist on for its own employees. All right, Ken, good of you to join us here on the Inside Track. It's an important issue, one we would love to have you back on to discuss. Ken Roth, the executive director of Human Rights Watch, everyone.